Talking about the most commonly question I get asked by far question I get asked by people almost I would say almost on a weekly if not a daily basis. Hey, I'm an artist, I'm a rapper, I'm a YouTuber, I'm a producer, Ruslan. How do I make money off of my art? How do I start making money? We going to have the Patreon Zoom call, King Dream Patreon Zoom call. Chop it up about this question. Don't you go nowhere. I don't need nothing else. Every time I'm with you, yo, it's something else. It's a fact, it's a fact, and it's nothing else. Get your hand out, you don't even need a help. Oh, I don't need nothing else. Every time I'm with you, yo, it's something else. It's a fact, it's a fact, and it's nothing else. Get your hand out, you don't even need a help. Oh, that's right. I don't need nothing else. That's right. King's Dream. What's going on? It's Roots along with King's Dream ENT. This channel exist to encourage, empower, inspire you, yes you, to live God's dream for your life. We cover all kinds of different topics from music, marketing, faith, culture, everything in between. And what you're going to witness is our weekly Sunday night Patreon, King's Dream Patreon Zoom call, the most talented online community in the entire universe. I'll put my money up against anybody's, anybody's community, pound for pound, artist for artist, it's, it's overall amazing, and you should be there if you're not there. So you're going to kind of get a glimpse into what those calls go like, and then we're going to hop offline, continue the conversation. This is by far the most commonly asked question I get. How do you make money off of your music, off of your art, off of your production, off of your YouTube, so on and so forth? But listen, if you're watching this live, even if you're watching a replay, but specifically if you're watching this live, I need you right now, give this video a thumbs up. Very helpful when you do that. Also... Also, let me know where you're watching this from. And if you are a rapper, a producer, or an artist of some kind, that helps me out a lot. And what follow-up questions you got about this? If there's something I don't answer in this video, do let me know what like follow-up questions you got. Because that gives me a gauge of this commonly asked question, which is a pain point for a lot of us. Um, my name is Ruslan. I am a full-time artist, creative entrepreneur. I've been a full-time artist since 2015. I've been making music since 2004 semi-professionally that's when i put out my first record and then it took me 11 years to go full time and let's keep ourselves muted fellas please um and then we uh we we've been full time for five years i live in san diego california one of the most expensive places in the world to live i'm a husband i'm a father and we've consistently grossed six figures as um as entrepreneurs, creative entrepreneurs. And this is a great question because Abel's asking somebody who is, is maybe a step ahead of him, right? So I'm making six figures. I've been making six figures. I know what it's like to make six figures. I know what it's like to live off of my art and my music business. So I ask people who are a step ahead of me. I ask people who are making seven figures, how do I scale to seven figures? So th this is, this is the, the, these are the types of conversations you want to have when you're trying to grow and evolve and make money and all that kind of stuff. So shout out to you guys. Hey, real quick, uh, I am beyond excited. Some of you guys have been asking for the new merch and it is here. I got a quick announcement. I don't want to take up too much time, but yo, first time ever, John Keith Anti-Hero Limited Edition Vinyl. We're doing 25 of these and that's it. 25 limited edition numbered and signed by John Keith himself. We got the King's Dream Outlier Windbreaker on sale for 49 bucks. This politically agnostic shirt is just just went on sale for 22 bucks and Yashua's dream. So we got new merch. If you spend $75, shipping is free. There's a code in there. You got to find it. If you spend $100, you get a free King's Dream Outlier mask. KingsDreamENT.com forward slash store. It's in the description. Uh, this windbreaker is super dope. Actually inspired by one of our own. My man just, just raised was like, yo, I want this windbreaker in this color. I made it for him. And then I was like, yo, this joint is fire. And yeah, man, so you guys go pick up some merch if you want to. It's a great way to keep the channel afloat and keep everything we're, we're doing here in terms of just keeping the lights on and all that kind of stuff. So without no further ado, speaking of people who keep everything going here, we're going to bring in uh, the King's Dream Patreon community. Uh, actually, one of the dopest dudes in this community, which is my man Abel, he asked this question in our post, and I wanted him to ask it here, and then we'll kind of unpack it and go in deep. And he'll kind of give you the context of his life, and I think many of you will relate to this. So uh, Abel, you are live, my man. Unmute yourself, and let's go right into it. All right. So my que I'm, I'm going to try not to be long-winded. Essentially, I had a conversation with friends, and I realized a lot of the way I perceive business in general is probably from a place of fear. 
Mm. Uh, if I really boil down to the root of it, it's fear of becoming something, uh, becoming someone that would, you know, make it more about uh, the things I never wanted to do music for, the attention, you know, the money. Mm-hmm. Pretty much that my, my motives would become impure in my pursuit to make it profitable. Uh, it's always been a wrestle of mine. Like, uh, I'm definitely a person who, who thinks a lot, who's like very self-aware, probably too critical on myself. So anyway, all that being said, I've arrived at a place that like, I'm, I'm aware that fear is not of God. And I also know he loves me. So if I step in this direction and I'm misguided, I mean, he'll straighten my path pretty much. So with all that being said, I'm like, I just want to take this seriously. And I'm in a place where I've released music. It's been cool, but I've kind of been just shooting arrows in the dark. And I've not mm. had any kind of intentionality to it. Maybe mm. very, very few times. I, mean, I can't say I've done a real serious effort um, that's been pointed, that's like organized. So mm-hmm. I guess organized is a good word. How do I get organized? How do I get intentional? Because um, I believe what I have to offer is something that could be valuable to other people. Um, and I'm kind of like at that place, like, all right, I want to give this a real shot. Where do I start? Whew. All right, man. And and for context, you're also a newlywed, right? So, like, it just got real for you, right? You're 24, <laughs> about to be 25. I, I got married at almost the exact same age. Like, I know, I know, I know what it's like to be there. And I'm going to answer this question the what just based on what I did, right? So this isn't like a, there's no one size fits all for this, right? I'm just going to answer this the way, the way this worked out for me. And it, it's not the way, it's not the way that most people would think about this. Okay. So just, 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 just bear with me. Okay. So, the, so listen to the first part of Abel's question. This is where a lot of us run into it, in, into conflict. Maybe you grew up wealthy, right? And maybe because you grew up wealthy, maybe money, it, you don't think about money as much. It's always kind of been there. Uh, and maybe no one taught you financial literacy and or money was your family's God, right? You're on that extreme. Money defined your identity. And there are some people like that. And so therefore, when it talks about making money from something that you use as like a way to minister through music, which Abel's a Christian, he's coming from that worldview, maybe you have that perspective, right? Maybe it's like, oh man, I, this just feels funny. And you've heard like, people kind of finesse the gospel and you're like, ah, I want to stay away from that. Or you're on the opposite side, which is where I was, where you grew up dirt poor on welfare. Mom's an alcoholic, dad's not in the picture, just a mess of a life, a mess of a person. And you, you have a, a a very low, dark view of money. You think, you think it's dirty. You think it's bad. You think, you think people who get money do it on the backs of other, other people. They take advantage of people, right? It's a, it's a dirty game. And so you think about it like that, right? Maybe maybe that's your perspective. That was that was a lot of my perspective. It's like I didn't know much about money because I was afraid of money. Or maybe you are a Christian and you are afraid of if you become successful, what will that do to you? What will the status, the notoriety do to you? Um, will it corrupt you? Will it will it, you know, m- more opportunities to sin? Will they? make you sin more, right? So, so may, and maybe you have some stuff like I did in the cut where you know you got these little rooms that you haven't worked through maybe because of trauma or whatever. And you're like, man, I'm still, I'm dealing with some of these things here on a small scale. What's it going to be like if I'm popping and I got girls sliding into my DMs and right, whatever, right? And we, we, we kind of play out these like really, um, not exaggerated, but like, hyperbolic situations right we think like we think success is either where you're at now like like the degree of success is like not successful where you're at now and and next thing you know you're jay-z like it's like that spectrum right there's we don't think about like the in between (laughs) of like what it takes to get there and the fact that like hey listen so few people become the jay-z's right but there's a there's a there's a middle ground there's an in-between ground and there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. So I'm going to try to just address this from, from my perspective. By the way, if you're watching this live, you want to be in the Zoom call, patreon.com forward slash King's Dream. You could hop on there, sign up, uh, $12 tier, and you could hop in the Zoom call. We're going to keep just discussing this after we go offline. So 
so there's all so I feel all that. I feel all that. And the the question really, I think the question is this. The question is how do you build a business off of your music? That's the actual question. Right? So we could pussyfoot around and we could say, "Oh, like I want to have a ministry and I want to do this and I want to do that," right? But what we're really asking is like, how do I build a business off of my art? That's the question. That question is very delicate because what? Traditionally, whether by nature or by society, we've been conditioned that artists aren't good business people. Well, you can't, I mean, come on, like you're an artist. Like, what do you mean? You're creative. You're one of those creative people, right? Like you don't, come on, you don't know anything about numbers. You can't be organized. You don't, you can't build systems. You don't know anything about accounting. I mean, look, most artists, they need a, they need a bit. You need a, you need a manager. You need a booking agent. You need a producer. You need a da 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 da, da. And, and, and so then there's that, right? Like there's that, there's, now that's placed on you when you're labeled instantly before you even start whether consciously or subconsciously you're now being told that you can't do these things you can't build a business because you're an artist and i just again i just don't think that's true i think that we can learn skills right we can learn these skills and so the the the, the bigger question is how do you build a business how do you build a business if we google like how to make money from music I, I, we can go over all the revenue streams those are easy right streaming merchandising, sales, concerts, right? I can, I can go over, we know all of the revenue streams. Most of us should know all the revenue streams, sync licenses. I'm going over my revenue streams right now, right? I make money off of my streaming music. That generates a good amount of money. I make money off of my syncing, which is like music bed and those checks that come in from when other people use my music for commercials. I make money off of my merchandising. I, uh, before COVID, was making money from shows. Right. And then we have the Patreon community. So I got about like five or six different revenue streams. So that's like easy, easy answer. That's how you make money. Well, you, you, you build out those revenue streams. But I think the question under the question is like, how do you build a business? How you build a business is you first got to you first got to believe that it's good to build a business. Right. So if you're coming from this, oh, like, I don't know about getting paid and I don't know if I'm going to be corrupted by success and money or I don't know if. You first got to get your mind right. You first got to stop and say, let me get my mentality aligned in a way that money is not evil. Success is not evil, right? Being effective and impacting people is not evil. One, one we got to start there. Many of you guys just aren't even there yet. I could just tell by how toxic you are about whenever I bring up money. I bring up the slightest thing about y'all getting paid, and it's uh, prosperity gospel. Ah, Ruslan, you're preaching that prosper. Die for the gospel, champ. You need to lay your life down, right? And I said this the other day, and I got, cra and I got crap for it. I said, listen, I don't believe in a prosperity gospel, but I believe the gospel positions you and transforms you into the type of person that is more likely to prosper. And I got crap. I got people telling me I was preaching the prosperity gospel. That's not the prosperity gospel, right? So I'm not saying believe that because you love Jesus, Jesus is going to give you cool things. I'm not saying that. I'm saying believe and be conformed to the likeness of Jesus. Die to yourself. Deny yourself. Learn discipline, self-control, kindness, gentleness, fruit of the spirit. And you will become a person that is more likely to be successful because you'll learn how to handle money. You learn how to be frugal. You learn how to work hard. You learn how to learn and how to be curious, how to humble yourself, how to ask the right questions. You learn how to be gentler, kinder, and overall be the type of person that people want to do business with. So the beginning of this, the beginning of this is first you got to just start with the proper mentality, right? I recommend listening to Christians who are not prosperity preachers, but Christians who present healthy biblical views of money. Who I listen to when I'm down and I'm afraid because of COVID, because of the economy. I listen to Dave Ramsey. I don't. I just did a video about the first time I've disagreed with Dave Ramsey, so I'm not going to sit here and say everything he says is absolute gospel truth. But I'm going to say, hey, that is who I go to, and and I listen to his stuff just because it, I just need to fill my mind with hope. I just need to fill my mind with man, like like it's going to get better. The yet the, the best is yet to come. If I if I keep working and I keep being faithful, like it's going to be all right. So I think first is just it's just a mentality change. A lot of you guys don't want the mentality change. You bought into some weird toxic theology. You bought into some nonsense. You think that the Illuminati is going to send you a direct message the moment you crack 100,000 followers. So why do anything, right? Why do anything? And so I think, I think first you got to just start with, 
where's your mentality at? Because if your mentality is success and money and fame and all this kind of stuff is evil, well, then, then that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And you're going to be mediocre and you're not going to go the extra mile and you are going to subconsciously self-sabotage. So I say, one, how do we get our mind right? And that requires, to me, filling your stuff that's going to kind of empower you to uh, to start thinking differently about money. And let's let's just be frank. I mean, even in this in the comment section right there, like there's people that don't want to do that, right? There's people that don't want to do that. There's people who are like, oh, money's bad, right? So that that's one. Two, I think you have to just start with just like a brutally, a brutally self-awareness of what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses, right? You have to just be completely brutally honest. And who are you trying to sell to? Because if you, because that's that's the that's the later part. The later part is you, you, running a business is two parts: creating a product or a service that people want, and then learning how to sell that product and service that people want. So you're gonna have to learn creation, which enables per enables case. He knows how to create. A lot of you guys know how to create good good music. Abel really definitely knows how to create good music. He's dope, right? Boom. So so there's that. There's the creation, and then there's the selling marketing conversion side, right? And again, most artists get super overwhelmed. I start talking about Facebook pixels and selling stuff and having a website and you guys tune out and you freak out. And you're like, what do you want to Facebook pixel? I don't know, Facebook pixel, what are you talking about? Oh, merch, what do you mean? Ah, oh, I gotta learn video editing, huh, why, right? So you guys freak out. So, but it requires self-awareness. So, so one, mentality, two, self-awareness. What is your value proposition to the marketplace? I have to know that I am a white dude in a black art form. I have to know that. That requires self-aware. I can't say, I can't say and do certain things. I have to be more sensitive. I have to be respectful of the spaces I'm in if I'm gonna make hip-hop music. So so just like that, that's an, an, an example of self-awareness. But I mean self-awareness to like, how do you dress? How do you look? What does your tone sound like? Are you good? D like <laughs> when you listen to your music and you listen to music of your favorite artist, is it comparable? Right? And I and thankfully I would I would say in Abel's case, it is. Like I think Abel actually makes really good music. He's one of the probably a couple dozen of people in this Patreon community that like makes amazing, amazing art. So one, you that like now we're talking about self-awareness, knowing yourself, knowing what your weaknesses are, knowing what your strengths are. Are you going to double down on your strengths? Or are you going to focus on your weaknesses, right? That's just, that, like, that's just the beginning of it. Like we're, we're just talking mentality shift. We're talking about knowing yourself and where you are in the process. And we're talking about, um, we're talking about how, are you going to add a value proposition to the marketplace? And that requires self-awareness. Super difficult. You know what I'm saying? Super difficult for most of us because most of us aren't self-aware. Once we get past that, I would say then it becomes about like the, the intersection of your skill sets to generate funding or to figure out ways to keep your costs so low that you can pay for stuff. Meaning this, if Abel was to come to me and say, hey man, I want to get into real estate. I would say, okay, you want to get into real estate. Well, guess what? You need to have a good credit score. You need to have a strong income and you need to have some money down to get into real estate. And Abel would be like, well, I don't have that. Okay. Well, at least you know where the ladder is, right? Or you got to have some type of program or some type of co-borrower to go in on you to get your first property, right? Now, now, now he knows where the ladder. So it's it's no different than music. What do you need to get popping in music? Well, you you got first you got to make good music, right? Then you actually have to say, okay, well now I need money to market myself to create videos. I need uh, systems to figure out how to get these things monetized. And and it, here's the deal, guys. Unfortunately or fortunately, the best way to get good at making music, not get, not get at selling music is to go and build a business with a unique skill, scarce, scarce skill set doing something else. I'll give you an example. What does that mean? Well, Nick D. Nick D. I always talk about Nick D. He's a person of this com uh, community. I'm making an album with Nick D. Super dope. Nick D. is blowing up, right? Like he's January of 2019. This man had 1,000 followers on Instagram. January 2020, he had 30,000 followers on Instagram. 
five, six, seven months later, he's at 60,000 followers on Instagram, right? He's, he's ma growing faster than anybody else in CHH, and he doesn't even need CHH. He doesn't need Rapsilla. He doesn't need your favorite Christian rapper to hop on a record of his. He doesn't need anybody because he's building an actual business. Well, what's the, what's the cheat code with Nick D? Well, Nick D actually went a build a business selling uh, services of videography and cinematography. He took that unique skill set and he was able to transfer it by what? Making more money and having more cash flow and having the skills to create the content. Most of y'all don't want to do that. You guys don't want to pick up a camera or, or learn how to video edit or whatever. Now you're sitting in this place of like, oh, I know what I need to do. I need to make more videos. I need to make more music, more videos, but you're not willing to learn the things that it requires you to make more music and more videos, either because you don't have the time or uh, because maybe you, you're intimidated. But that's what it requires is learning how to do other things. This is called skill stacking or, or, or talent stacking. So then you need money, right? You need money to pay for this stuff. So if you if, if you come in the game and there's some people in this community that are like, yo, I make 150 grand a year doing real estate. Great, different conversation. You can hire people to do these things for you. You can hire a video guy, you can hire an editor, you could hire a Facebook marketer and you could pay somebody for Facebook ads and you can get popping that way, right? That's what you do, right? That's what you do. But if you don't have the money, that means you have to find the time to create the skills or you have to build a team to create the skills. And then once you create the content, more content, more content, more content, you'll grow your audience and then you gotta find a unique way to monetize them. So I just told you guys, right? I'll pull it up again, just so you guys don't miss it. We're doing a sale on our merch, right? I'm showing you guys this stuff in real time. I'm telling you what to do, but I'm, I'm literally showing you guys. We're, we, got, we got merch, kingsdreament.com forward slash store. What are we doing? Oh, here we go. We got a limited edition, signed and numbered, $100 item from John Keith, right? 25 pieces of these. We figured out a creative way to monetize something that's unique to the marketplace. People like vinyl, people like uh, scarcity. This is, a, this is sales. Now we're talking about sales. Now you got to figure out what to sell. A lot of us don't know what we're actually going to sell. So figuring out how to, sh how to sell and then figuring out what to sell. How to sell is going to be creating the content, shooting the videos, putting up dope Instagrams, putting up inspirational quotes, so on and so forth. But what are you actually selling at the, at the bottom of that, of that funnel, if you will, right? What, what is it at that bottom of that funnel? So for me, we have merchandising. I have, I have this Patreon community. We have a hundred dollars piece of vinyl, right? Eventually I'm gonna create a course about some of this stuff. You see what I'm saying? And so it, it, all, it all starts to connect into, oh, Abel has 10,000 followers. I don't know how many followers you have, Abel, but let's just say you have 10,000 followers. And if two or 300 of those followers make a purchase every month, which is what? That's like 2% of those followers make a purchase every month. Abel can then make a comfortable living and or take that money, pour it back into ads for the music to keep growing the streams. And at a certain rate, those ads are going to generate more right? The streams you can drink more than what the ads cost. That's what it is in my shirt. Uh, in my shirt, somebody said, yeah, shirt. Yeah, kingsdreament.com forward slash store. You can pick up the shirt right now. Uh, you, you see what I'm saying? And so it all connects. So I know I just said a whole lot and I don't mean to like just go over anybody's head. I'm just, it is a more about the big idea. Get your mind right. It's about building a business. You, too many of you guys are, are, are thinking it's just going to inspire you and you're going to be, art it's about building a business and to build a business, you either need capital and revenue, or you need a skill, um, unique skill set and the ability to create the content. So shout out to Marcus J. Car uh, Marcus J. Carey. He said, it's like your superpower, right? What is the intersection of all your different skills? In my case, guys, I'm not the most amazing rapper. I'm not the most amazing producer. I'm not the most amazing YouTuber, but I'm a, I'm a B B minus at all those different things. And when you stack those three things together, Ruslan does YouTube, Ruslan does, you know, uh, he raps, he produces, oh, and this fool can edit videos, oh, and he could take good photos. That's a very unique intersection. I, even if even if I my entire business collapsed tomorrow, that skill I can take and go monetize it more, make more money doing that for somebody else than I would working a Joe job. Right, so it's the skills. It's the skills that literally help you build your own business that you could practice and learn on other people, and then apply them to your own business, make more money helping other people business build businesses and do it yourself to your own business. This is all very difficult. This is all very hard. This is all very exhausting, and it's not easy to do. Um, let's go into the the, the Zoom call. Um, Abel, do you have a follow up question about this? Um, you, I, I could pin you back up, or I could bring in Trutha. 
Um, and we can kind of just 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 unpack this for a little bit. So, you want me to put? put uh, let, okay, let me put pin Truth up real quick. Truth, are you live, bro? Yes, sir. Um, no, I love everything you shared. I think people mystify things like money and stuff like that. They misinterpret the scripture. They say money is the root of all evil when it's the love of money. So, right, totally on par. I agree with everything you said. Um, my question ties in with this, but I think it just really gives. I think it's more of like getting your testimony of when you when you realize you had a need for like a system to be able to do all the all of these different things mm -hmm. because you know i know that you're pretty much you mix master produce rap create merch you you at one point or another done all of these different things as one person mm -hmm. or very few people that help out with these processes but what mm -hmm. when did you realize you needed a system to be able to do this in an effective way to sustain it and then uh what are some of the systems that really help you? That's a great question. So he asked, when did I figure out, when did I figure out that I need a system? I'm still figuring out that I need a system. Truth is, it's hard, right? Because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a creative person who likes to be hands-on with stuff, right? So I'm still figuring out that, hey, yes, I can get the mix to my preference, but I'm better off giving it to Ayman and either paying him or giving a percentage and, and letting somebody else be a part of it. And it may not be where I want it exactly, but it'll be at 80%, 90%. That's better. That's, that's what a business person does, right? Is they outsource stuff that they can't do or they shouldn't do themselves. So it becomes, what, what is my, where am I most valuable? Where am I, where's my time most valuable, right? And it's not, if I'm, if I'm like, I'll give you guys an example. And some of you guys may think this is crazy, but like, some of you guys like, uh, I don't know, changing your own oil or like working on your own car. And you're like, I save so much money changing my own oil or fixing my own toilet. I don't do none of that stuff. That's a waste of my money and my time because let's just say my, my, my hour rate. Like if somebody were to reach out and say, I need a, I need a feature or I want to do some one-on-one -on -one consulting. I'm not doing anything for less than 500 an hour. That is what my time is worth to me, right? Well, my time is worth to me. So if I'm, sp if I'm saving $40 from changing my own oil, right? Like, I, I, it's not that I saved $40, it's that I lost $460 that I could have been building my YouTube, which may not really benefit me that much until two, three years down the road, but the decisions I'm making today, I could really get my AdSense up, right? Uh, making a beat or making a song that can get used in a Google commercial. One Google commercial could pay me five to $10,000. I could spend an hour or two working on a beat, an hour or two working on a song, get it on music bed, and that thing could generate hundreds of thousands of dollars for me over the lifetime of the song. I have records that have generated 10, 20, $30,000 in commercials. So my, my hourly rate at the minimal, I'm not doing anything less than $500 an hour. So when, when you realize what your hourly rate is, and you say, man, ooh, if I'm doing this at this rate, and I'm at, and you're actually generating, you have to then scale back and say, hey, I can't do the things that I think I need to be doing to save money. I'm actually more effective paying somebody. But that's if you're generating money. If you're not generating money, you need to learn as much as you can, right? I've mixed my stuff forever. I, you know, I did things. I, I produce because. I want more of the publishing because I know the publishing is where the real money's at, right? That passive income. I make the YouTube. Why? Because I know the AdSense is, is I'm making money on YouTube in my sleep, right? I do Patreon not because I need the money, but because I know that if I help a bunch of you guys become wildly successful and become six-figure entrepreneurs, what that does to my reputation as an influencer on top of like, it's just the right thing to do, right? Helping other people to me is just the right thing to do. So... I'm still learning, bro. I'm still learning about systems. I'm still, I'm st it's still a challenge. It's still a struggle. The systems that have been most beneficial for me uh, have probably been the way I make music. I start with a template uh, for every beat. Every beat has a template. My drums are preloaded. I got a couple sounds preloaded. I make every beat the same way. Um, another system is just the way I write music. I don't write anything down. I just punch. I go. I punch a lot of my bars. So the way I make music is faster than the average person who has to sit here, write it down, and then they got to go from writing to thinking to saying. No, I don't write anything. I just go. So that saves me a ton of time versus people that got to sit and write on a phone or write a pen and pad. So the way I make beats, the way I make music, the way I make merchandising, right? I make I make merch in a, in a very unique way where I don't ever have to have minimals. I don't ever need to go order 48 or 36 or 72 of one. One design. I could test stuff. Um, 
uh, my, my advertising. I, I partnered with Toned In. I talked about Toned In all the time. Toned In allows me to run Facebook ads, Instagram story ads for my music to consistently be growing my audience. And it's at a point where if, P, if my, because my streams are up 30%, that it, it balances out. Meaning that if I'm spending $500 a month on ads for my Spotify, the number of streams I'm getting actually breaks even. I'm in a very unique position to that. Why? Because I have back catalog. I've built the back catalog. Now I'm learning about building teams, right? So now what I'm trying to do is I'm saying, hey, I make these videos, they're 30 minutes long, I really need to scale them to put them on other platforms like Instagram, Instagram stories. If I do that, it'll grow more aggressively. I'm not going to sit here and take this 30-minute live stream and try to chop it down into a two-minute video for IGTV. I'm going to go pay somebody to do that for me, three, four, five hundred dollars $500 a month, and outsource that, someone who's more passionate about editing and more efficient than I am at editing, right? So that, 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 I, but for the longest, I did it all myself and I learned it all myself and I can communicate it all myself, right? So I think it's finding those systems for yourself and knowing where you're at, but it's gonna start with you knowing a little bit about everything, you knowing how to balance, again, mentality. My mentality is in a way where I believe abundance. I believe I could be successful. I believe that God is for me. I believe that money's not evil. I believe that I I have everything I need and that if I keep working hard, I keep learning, that I can make a comfortable living for myself doing my art. And I set hard deadlines to that. I told my wife, 2010, uh, I said, hey, if I'm in the same place in a year from now, you need to tell me to stop making music. And I was dead serious about that. And guess what? We leveled up and made more money than we ever had because I set a hard deadline on something because why? I had a wife. I needed to figure out my career path. When you start saying stuff like, hey, if I'm in the same spot this time next year, I'm going to stop. I'm going to figure something else out. That gets real, right? All of a sudden, it's real. It's not. You can't just goof around with music, right? Now it's a business. If I'm not profitable with this business, I'm not doing this. This ain't a business. This is a hobby. You see what I'm saying? You get that mentality. A lot of us don't want that. We're just kind of goofing around, just like, ah, you know, I'm just kind of chilling. I rap. I do it for the Lord, so I don't really need to make money, mm, right? And it's like, bro, you ain't really about this life. Like, you're not really about this life. You just, you, you know, and then the people, the people who are about it, man, they're about it. You know what I'm saying? They're about it. And that's why you see someone like Nick D who could pull up and go from 1,000 to 60,000 followers in 18 months. Is, new, is Nick D freakishly more talented than Abel? I don't think so. I think Nick D is really dope, but I don't think he's like light years ahead of Abel. No, Nick D built a six-figure business doing cinematography, took the mentality of a boss, went into music, and, and, and if we're going to be honest, he kind of pooped on everybody, every other aspiring Christian rapper. He blew their numbers out of the water, right? And he's still not accepted by Christian hip-hop, but it doesn't matter because he's good and he has a system in place. Right. So anyway, I'm gonna bring in my brother uh, Lamar Riddick. Um, uh, go ahead, boss. You uh, you you are live. Hey, what's going on, man? <clears throat> but uh, on, man. yeah, I just wanted to add in and weigh in on um, Abel's you know question earlier. And one thing about you know doing the business side, you gotta remember there's a lot of advantages of making sure you're treating your music as a business too. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we just look at the disadvantages. Oh, well, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to um, be deceptive. I don't want to be that shark. I don't, you got to remember, like, when you get your stuff together, the government gives you benefits, right? Mm -hmm. So think about this logically now. So you're going to say you're out here doing music for the Lord, which is fine. And you want to take care of your family. So you're spending how much on mixing, how much on videos, and none of that's coming back to your family. And you think that's helping your family? Mm. Like, that's just doesn't make any sense to me. So it's better to, you know, register a business and be able to get your write-offs. So when you're spending all this money on your music, mm -hmm. you can at least be getting a tax break for your family, at the mm -hmm. very least. So, you know, I just wanted to weigh in and say that, like, make sure you register your stuff as a business. LLC is sole proprietor. Because all this money that you're spending, it's like treating your career like rent or like mortgage nothing's wrong with either or it depends on the situation you're in mm -hmm. but you're paying rent every month it's not you're not getting any equity from that you're not building anything it's just going mm -hmm. to a pit hole to keep a roof over your head same mm -hmm. thing with your music if you're not doing it as a business and reporting it to the government you're just throwing money out there you know what i'm saying like you're just saying well yeah i'll pay 200 dollars for a mix i'll pay 100 dollars for cover art you're spending 400 dollars a month and not getting anything back at the end of the year 
Mm-hmm. So that that's all I really want to say um, in regards to that, just to, you know, think logically about it. You know, if you want to talk about, oh, I'm afraid of money and all of that stuff, well, you you take it from your household and you're just giving it to everybody else. You know what I'm saying? So at least get it back at the end of the year. Um, but that's all, that's all I wanted to say, though, is just, you know, register a business, man, is very important. Yeah, that's great. That's that's great. And so, Abel, uh, very practical. That's, that's, that's a great, very tangible, practical step, right? Go register your business, right? Go register as a business or proprietor. Something you get, a, you at least get a tax break. I would say two. Figure out, uh, figure out where can you start investing money. Is it on toned in ads? Do you have enough revenue? Um, do you have enough catalog that if you put a couple hundred bucks, it'll get your streams up, get your visibility up, right? Is that is that does that does that make sense for you? Or do you need to go invest into a product that you can start selling to people, a T-shirt, a hoodie, right? I don't know, right? So I think th- so. Where can you invest money into? Um, so because again, to Lamar's point, right? That's a great point. Check it out. This is how this works for me, right? I have a business. I get to write off stuff, a lot of stuff, right? And that means that I get to live a more comfortable life because a lot of the stuff I get to do, whether it's taking somebody out for a meal, I get to write 50% of that off, right? That means that I, that counts as a loss against what I would generate, my mileage. Um, if I hire a coach, right? If I'm paying somebody to coach me, I could write that off, right? So I want to acquire a certain amount of write-offs. I don't want to get too in the weeds about um, taxes and stuff like that. But I'm saying I make investments. I make strategic investments all the time, whether it's ads, whether it's a coach, whether it's uh, paying for other people's services, whatever it is, I'm always making investments. And more importantly, I'm always looking to make investments into my systems because I don't, if you're talking a biz, a real business, not not right now, but in five years from now, you don't ever want to be trading your time for money. That's not a business. You're owning your job at that point. And that's cool. And that's dope. A lot of us start that way. A lot of us start saying, hey, we're just going to own our, at least I don't got to work for somebody else. I can make 50000 here. But if I do this for myself, I can make 25000 I can survive off 25000 You start, but, but, but to build and scale a business, you don't want to trade your time for money. So I will always invest in systems that will not let me trade my time for money. I'd rather pay somebody to chop down this video into a minute video, into a two minute video, than to sit and do it myself, right? And so it just, it just all takes time. But I would say, able to answer your question, you got to figure out, what, what is your product going to be? What can you sell people? And it's not going to be a digital album. I'm telling you that right now, right? Um, look at, look, again, look at what Bartholomew Jones is doing, right? What is he selling people? He's selling people, first of all, it's an experience and it's a lifestyle, right? But he launched Coffee Black. It's, it's much easier for him to monetize coffee than it was to monetize his music on Spotify. Why? Because you're getting a third of a cent to get to per stream on Spotify, that's considering your distributor is not taking a cut. You're getting a third of a cent where he could sell a $20 thing of coffee and make $12, $13, dollars per transaction, right? So you gotta, what is your product? What are you selling at the end of the day? Cause you're not gonna make any money selling merch, right? Uh, I mean, excuse me, selling music. It's just, it's just not, you're not, it's not gonna justify the amount of commitment to sell music when you could be selling another product. So I think you gotta figure out a product to sell outside of monetizing your music. Once you could get that product, then you could take that money, pour it back into the music, pour it back into getting your numbers up, pour, right? And then, it, so are we building a business? And, and, and when you're building a business, then the music could just be the marketing for the business. Or are we trying to chase a status game of numbers and followers and streams? Because I don't need a ton of numbers and followers and streams. I want to get to seven figures. That's my goal. Like I want to get to seven figures. I want to buy a home off of this music thing Like, that's what I'm trying to do. So I don't really care about how many followers I have. I need those metrics to an extent for the for the credibility of them. But I'm more thinking, what is my bank account going to look like in the next two to three years? That's what I'm gauging on. You know what I'm saying? That's the numbers I'm paying attention. So uh, able for you. I think you got to figure out, get your mentality, your mind right. Start consuming different voices Two, go register it as a business. It'll become more real. Three, have a serious conversation with your wife about where you want to be in a year, where you want to be in three years. What are some realistic goals? Four, figure out what product you're going to sell. Is it going to be a t-shirt, a hoodie, a beanie, a snapback, a a coffee? I don't know. What are you into? You know what I'm saying? Um, 
And I think once you figure those things out, bro, you'll be more in line and more on a trajectory to make this a business and make it less of a hobby. You know what I mean? And so um, does anybody else want to chime in before we before we get offline? Um, again, shout out to all you guys watching live. If you want to join us, feel free to um, feel free to sign up for the Patreon. But uh, this is. This is stuff that's like it's it's this is stuff that that it's just it's just advanced like this isn't stuff that we can like dive deep into over you know a, a live stream or even a Zoom call like this, this requires like like systems and like really exhaustive things of figuring out how to do this. You're talking about learning Facebook ads. You're talking about learning right um, a lot of different pieces to this right and it's hard guys. It's hard. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would be a successful rapper. Right. And just because you're seeing rappers who are less talented than you become successful, that doesn't mean that they necessarily work harder. There is a component of luck and providence in this. So and so knew so and so's so and so and boom, they blew up. Great example. Right. Uh, rapper named G Easy. I'm giving you guys one example before we go. G Easy. I don't think he's that talented, but you come to find out G Easy was roommates with uh, Lil Wayne's tour manager. Well, of course he's going to have an advantage, right? Of course he's going to have. And you'll find a lot of these stories. So it's not that someone's more talented or worked harder, has a better system. They just got lucky. Don't look at people who are getting lucky and assume that your system and your process and your journey is going to be like them. A lot of people got lucky and that's why they fall off in a couple years and they're broke by, by the time they're 35 because they don't really know what they're doing. They just got lucky. You know what I mean? You don't want to be lucky. Accidental success is not dope. Because you, you don't know how to recreate it. Abel, you want to become successful at music, and then you want to be able to stack multiple businesses down the road on top of that. You want to help other people get their business off. You want to do other ventures. Because if you're accidentally lucky, then what, is, what does that even matter? You know. So I think that's another thing. Is like We compare ourselves to people who just got accidentally lucky. So-and-so was born in the right city, and there happened to be a record label in that city, and they got connected with people through the right circle, and then they got signed, and now they look like they're amazing. But you don't know what that person's pockets look like. You don't know that that person is struggling and living. I know because I talk to a lot of these fools on labels, and I know what's really going on, right? Like I know who really who's really paid and who isn't. Like I know who's, who has to go get a job, even though they got 10 times the amount of followers followers than I do, right? And so that that's 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 the tough part, man. So anyway, um we're going to go offline, guys. Thank you so much uh on Patreon. You can go do that right now and uh and we'll, we'll keep chopping it up. I I, I kind of screwed this up here on the on the YouTube. But thank you guys so much for hanging out, man. Appreciate you guys. Um give this video a like and a thumbs up. Share it with somebody, man. I know I said a whole lot. No, I said a whole lot, but I think it needed to be said. All right. Peace.